every day we wake up and we go at it again and come evening and you're crying about how you were blaming and shaming and negative with them and having a nasty face at them and mm -hmm. you're surprised. Welcome to the Focus on the Family broadcast, helping families thrive. Hey ladies, welcome back to Focus. Thank you, it's Thank a joy to be you. here. You guys have really struck a chord with moms, uh, whether the issue last time when we had you was on anger, yes. women in anger, and, mm -hmm. and, and this time with the parenting issues, kind of the basics, but what are you seeing that you're connecting so well with the mother community? Well, I think that we're just, um, I would like to say that we're smart, and so we're talking about things that we perceive. This is your opportunity. That, I know, but I think that we're just moms who have um, truly struggled ourselves, yeah. and we have turned um, with all of our hearts and all of our prayers to the Lord and said, Lord, we want to look more like you in the way we're responding to our children and less like our natural knee-jerk responses, yeah. and we mm -hmm. can't do that without you. We know that the fruit of your spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, but my parenting doesn't look that mm -hmm. like that. I, I know that you've told me if I abide in you and you abide in me, there will be fruit, so where's the fruit, God? And so we just started pursuing what does it look like to put on the fruit, to keep in step with this fruit of God's spirit in my life. In the parenting well, role. In the parenting <laughs> role, <laughs> as he continues to mature me yeah. from the inside mm -hmm. and the fruit grows up and out and hangs on the laurels of my life, how can I still start practicing love, joy, yeah. peace, and mm -hmm. all the other fruit? You know, one, one descriptor you left off, which I think is an important one too, is the tears that moms cry. Oh. Sometimes mm -hmm. because of their own guilt. Yeah. You know, they got angry. Oh, Lord, help yes. me. Why do I get angry at my kids? Speak to that before we get yeah. into the scripting idea, because I think moms carry such a heavy burden. I've seen it right. in Jean. I mean, it's almost unbearable. Yeah. Well, you're totally speaking my language because that was me. I would say, you know, before I had kids, there's certain things I'm never going to say to my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I love those words, never. And I hear so many other parents say, oh, I'm so mad at myself. I promised myself I wouldn't speak like that to my children. And then we get in the heat of the moment, and we just have that knee-jerk reaction, that default phrase or thing that we say, the shaming language, whatever it is, that just flows right naturally off of our tongues. And we do feel a lot of guilt. And we say, oh, you know, I'm hopeless as a mom. Why do I keep doing that? And I began to realize that as one day led to the next, and I kept saying the things I did not want to say, that I didn't have a good plan in place. Right. I just mm. simply didn't translate those verses that Wendy just shared about the fruit of the Spirit. I wasn't thinking and making a plan. What does putting on self-control for myself look like in the way I respond to my child instead of reacting to them. And I can have hope knowing that God's going to help me. Yes. He promises me that fruit. I'm not the worst mom on the planet. I'm a sinner who's struggling, but there's hope for me to change because God is the God of all hope. Right. And so I have the ability by relying on the Lord and asking him to help me, Lord, change this one thing in me, this right. one thing I'm saying wrong. Help me make a plan and to say something that honors you and really coaches my child and breathes life into them. Well, and I love that she's saying this one thing because what I say to the woman who's crying is, hey, if you take a moment, I bet you can pinpoint what that trigger is that's, mm -hmm. that's bringing you to that place that makes you feel defeated and you're doing the wrong response. Your face is all screwy and you're, mm -hmm. you're exasperated and you're slamming cupboards in the kitchen and... What is it that consistently your kids are doing over and over that always takes you by surprise? Why are you surprised? Yeah, that, when that, daily, it's the yeah. same stinking. <laughs> always thing. takes you by it's surprise. Always. Is the key why every can't time. they get their shoes on and get in the car? Or it's why is he always coming out of bed and I'm exhausted at the end yeah. of the day? And if you can pinpoint what it is, you know, one of one of the things that we shared with you guys last time, based on our book Triggers, which is really about mommy anger, is. Figure out what you mean to say before you say something mean. Exactly. So take a look mm -hmm. at those times when you're really struggling and say, okay, no, what do I really mean to say? Mm -hmm. And if I can slow down and sit down, then I can write down a better response. Yeah. Let's get to this, the yes. kind of the can-do make mm -hmm. a change. Yes, yes. you've heard that, that, um, that quote that says, 
the, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different response. That's why being a parent so, is insane. <laughs> like you, might, you might be wonderful at lecturing, and every day uh. you do the same old lecture, and one day you're just hoping it's going gonna, it's gonna to click for him. Yeah. No, you actually, let's stop the lecture. Let's come up with what we really mean to say. And, right. and sometimes the script is a consequence. Right. So you've, describe you've already, it. You've already been lectured about a sibling rivalry. Let's right, right, take it. That right. was your first example. Right. So they've heard all about, they've heard all the verses about brothers living together in unity. You've gone through all of the Bible studies. <laughs> well, it's you've really memorized hard. Is they all. don't care. Well, yeah. That's even worse. Is this I told them they don't they care. This is a pretty me... classic response by a Christian mom to quote scripture. Verses, <laughs> yeah, right? I know it is. Or maybe to have the children write them out. Yes, yeah, there yes, you go. multiple times. Yeah. 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 But how can, if they already know it, one of the things that Amber and I remind each other, because we are friends too, so I will actually call her and say, I'm struggling with this. I did not know now that they're getting older. So we're always reminding each other, you know, Wendy, you don't need to lecture him. He knows mm-hmm. that that's wrong behavior. So let's take it from sibling rivalry. I come in first thing in the morning, and they're already swinging, if not with their hands, then with their words, mm-hmm. right? And my natural tendency, just my natural response is that if they're fighting, I need to fight them to stop fighting. Right. You know, their fight is actually an invitation for me to join them in the fight. And I had to change my mind. And that's actually one of my scripts when my kids are struggling. I'll tell them, I see that you're struggling. You need to change your mind about how you're going to struggle. And so I've been using that script on myself. Hmm. I see, Wendy, that they're fighting and you want to join them in the fight. You need to change your mind about how you're going to respond to this. So I have started seeing them like they're in a boxing ring and they're swinging at each other. And the coach does not jump into the boxing ring. The coach stays on the outside of the ring, walks around to their corner and is communicating, I'm in your corner and you're struggling. I'm not struggling because I'm the parent. I'm the one here to help you through the struggle. So I've had to learn when my kids are having a fight, their sibling rivalry, I stay on the outside of the fight. And I call them to their corners. So I'll say out loud, ding, 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 everybody to your corners. And that's my simple script. So there's a simple script, and then there's a lecture script. So do they go to their corner, or they do they know, go, yeah. and I'll say, forget listen, it, Mom. Well, I had to train them that this is actually what we do. And they're older now. So I have a 14-year-old that when I say, everyone to your corners, he goes to his room, and he knows this isn't really like, it's not a timeout. It's a gift. You get to go to your room, you can read, you can write, you can play your guitar, you can, kids can do Legos, but you may not fight. And so that's another one of my scripts so, is, you may not fight. Yeah, and that's good, and I like that. And the concept of the script is think it out ahead of time when yes. your kids fight. And you've listed 30 in this book, mm-hmm. which is outstanding. Yeah. If you cover 30, you've covered most of the right. things you're going right. to encounter. But let me take you to the sibling rivalry script, because having two boys, yeah, we've had a, a few of those. Yeah. And, and the point is, in the training of them, you know, it's great the outcome is there now. You can go ding, ding to your corners, and they've learned to go. But the parent who hasn't done that, right. it's the training aspect. It is, so, and I well, had to take them by the it? hand and walk right. them. Right, take them by the hand, walk, okay. And it's good and to start they come. young. If you and start out they it, come, right? Immediately yeah. after, I, I take them right back. Yeah. And do you need me to sit here right. with you while you learn to have a break? And I'll tell you why you're having a break. You're going to hurt your brother. You're going to hurt your relationship, and I'm your mom, and I'm not going to allow that. I love you too much. I love him too much. Yeah. You know, I can think of a couple of times when the kids were younger, and they're in a public place, mm-hmm. and you can't, it's not at home where you can say, ding, 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 let's go right. to your corner, because the corner is the other end of the store. Yes. Mm-hmm. But what, what do you do in that public environment where so many moms, you know, it's the snares and the growls sure. that you get from the other mothers, but your two kids, maybe three kids are going at it. What can you do in that public right. place? Right. I have a couple of suggestions. One. If you can, leave. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, it, just, it's true. If you're out of toilet paper and you're out of milk, I understand <laughs> yeah. you need to persevere Make sure you and get, get it. Them. But really, you can leave. And what's a better teaching tool to, you know, your veins are bulging and you're, you know, strong holding everybody with your hands and pushing the cart with your hip. And you're just going to make it through and they'll learn the lesson. And then you, you know, you explode at them in the car. Or to say, this isn't working. And then you get to the car, you drive home, and oftentimes, I remember those times, they'd fall asleep almost immediately, and they were communicating, I'm not in a place where I can do this, right? (laughs) Right. But the second is, um, you don't need to teach your child in the problem 
what they're doing wrong. In the arena. So my script to myself is don't parent in the problem. Save the lesson for later. Mm. Get home, get calm, and say, that did not work. Let's talk about why it didn't. And maybe again, maybe the script needs to involve a, a consequence. Yeah. When that happens, then when we come home, you need to, whatever right. that consequence is going to be in that situation, if we go for ice cream, if whatever it is, no, that's good. you won't get it. But you don't need to stronghold them, push through, make sure it was the most teachable moment. You can actually save the lesson for later. Get out there. Get yeah. out of there. Mm-hmm. And it's really being the adult. I mean, that's what I hear Thank you, you saying. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. We get to that. do that, yes. But, you know, it, again, we're all emotional creatures. Mm-hmm, and right. even we as moms and dads, when we're in that grocery store, mm-hmm. we're responding out of our embarrassment now. That's right. You know, yes. we're lashing back yeah. and get in line. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Come on, stop that. Yeah. And it, it just is this vicious cycle. So I like the idea. Step back. Don't, don't take the bait. Right. Just be calm. Get to the car. They probably and, fall asleep. <laughs> and remember the script that you can say to yourself as a parent. Sometimes we need to have our own internal scripts. We write about that in the book too. And sometimes the internal script that I have when, in the store when my kids are not behaving is their behavior is not a reflection of me. It's not a reflection of me. Really? So breathe. No, I'm telling you. I'm just saying I'm, on behalf Truly. of all moms. Are you serious? Truly. How do you yeah. get there? Truly. It's a, it takes a long time. It really does, you know, to get to the point where you you can just breathe. I just give myself a, a moment to catch my own breath because it's more embarrassing when you see kids acting out and then you see the parents losing oh. their marbles oh, too. Again, joining That's them more in more embarrassing, fight, right? It's like yes. three kids going at it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and so I just, I saw that so much in myself initially that I thought, you know what, I'm this time it's going to happen. They're going to act out. So when it happens... I am going to be putting on self-control and I'm going to breathe and I'm going to remember that this is not a reflection of me. They are their Mm. own sinful natures. (laughs) And what I get to do now is model. You know, all of these parenting scripts really are us modeling for our children how to communicate in a way that honors the Lord and breathes life into others. And they'll be able to use that for every relationship they have moving forward. All right, let's go to another good one. Disobedience. (laughs) I said to do it. Why do I have to do it? Just because you said so. Because I said so. I mean, what parent hasn't heard that at some (laughs) age? I mean, it's usually 10, 11, 12 where they start kind of that challenge. Mm -hmm. But speak to the disobedience factor. Those things can happen at a young age too. I don't want to. Right. And, and, you know, the response, the hands are on the hips and you're saying, because I told you or because I'm the parent, right? because I'm the mom. And you that's know? good enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's why. And you know what? That is true. That biblically it is true. Is there true. is a time for that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a time for that. We are the authority. God has given us that authority. But Wendy shared a verse earlier that, you know, we tell our kids, the Bible talks about that it, you are required to obey us so that it will go well with you, so that you will have a long life. There's all these benefits to obedience. And so we try to talk about those sort of organically as we go throughout the day. Like, oh, look at you. I just saw that you did the right thing. I'm very proud of you. That really blessed me. And I know that blesses the Lord. So part of our scripts are looking for opportunities to be positively affirming them when they are obedient, as opposed to always trying to parent and yeah. give scripts in the aftermath of the problem. But then, you know, catching them doing something good mm-hmm. is a really good headspace to be in as a mom. That is a great comment. Yeah. And some researchers mm-hmm. say you need 10 to 1, 5 yes. to 1 right. affirmative That's right. comments to one yeah. negative. I read that yeah. when my kids were very young and I remember just crying. Like I, rem- I remember the snot <laughs> when I was like, but I, there aren't that many positives. And what I felt mm. the Lord say to me was, well, then there needs to be less negative correction. Wow, like that, instead of saying, you know, I have five Wendy, negatives. you got to say that again because so many moms, <laughs> right. I mm-hmm. feel it. I see it I in know. Jean. Mm-hmm. It's so counterintuitive for the mom it is. to get it is. that. Say it again. Sure. In, if, if the ratio is we need 10 positives to one negative and we can't manufacture enough positives, we can't find enough positives, mm-hmm. well, that means we need to have less negatives. I can see the negatives and I can find a time to put those... 25 nasty things my boys said to each other in one teachable moment. Say, hey guys, after we clean up the dishes from lunch, I want you to join me on the white couch in the front room. Not the white couch. <laughs> I can hear them now. No, good things happen. The white couch. We're in trouble. <laughs> like, why not the orange couch? That's where we have fun. So they'll join me in the front room and I'll say, this is the rhythm that I'm noticing today. Oh, good. Either it's a rhythm, maybe we're in a rhythm of disobedience. 
you mm. know, with no's. And my kids actually don't say no. They say other words that mean no. <laughs> they do. You know, like, um, hey, bud, well, we're doing some laundry. Bring the, bring the laundry from your room and the boys' bathroom. Yeah, I'm just gonna. That, uh-huh, that's right. his no. That's his yeah. teenage no. Yeah, I'm just gonna means... No, I'm not going to do it. Or it's yes, yeah. and then 20 minutes goes and then, by, yes, and, and it's still no. So whatever the thing is that you're seeing that could have yeah. been 25 negative corrections, take note of what they are, and I'll bring them together, and I'll say, this is what I'm noticing today. How can we make a choice to turn around? So that's the script. That's a script. On disobedience. What would be another example of disobedience? So w- one of the things script? that I did with my boys is I took that verse on obedience. Again, you know, I'm, I'm big on just taking one key area that I need to work on or that they need to work on at a time. Right. Otherwise, we get really overwhelmed as parents. So if I'm working on disobedience with them, I will talk about, you know, all the benefits of obedience in the Bible, you know, just simply, casually as we're going about our day. And one of the verses talks about, you know, that it will go well with you. So I tell my boys, I said, this is one of the benefits of obedience. When you obey me, when you obey your dad, it will go well with you. And the opposite of that is that things are not going to go well if you don't obey. They're just not going to go well. And so we kind of talk about that, you know, over a couple of weeks. And then sure enough, the opportunity will arise where they inevitably will disobey and something will not go well for them as a result. They sure. will go way too high up on that, um, on that, you know, hill that I've told them mm-hmm. not to climb up on in our backyard and they fall and they get hurt. Or I tell them, you know, you need to take your jacket today because your teacher's taking you on a field trip. You're going on a long walk. Nope, not taking my jacket, mommy. I'm frozen. (laughs) You know, there's all these natural consequences. And sometimes it's, I clearly told you that if you did this, this would be the the consequence that you would receive. And now they're experiencing that. So we know and we see. So in those moments, I'll say, you know what, son, I love you. I'm really sorry that happened. But what happens when you don't obey? And then they'll say, things don't go well. Yeah, they don't go well. I'm so sorry you mm-hmm. had to experience yeah. that. Amber from is really good at parenting with empathy, mm. allowing natural consequences to do the work. Yeah, and say, "Wow, as a result of that, well, you you hurt yourself. As a result yeah. of that, you can't go to youth group on right. Wednesday. Mm-hmm. As a result of that, and I'm sorry, that must be really hard for you. Let's talk yeah. about how that might go better next time. Which again, mm-hmm. what's so good about that? It takes you out of the direct it does. firing you, line. Yeah. Of you're the not conflict. even doing the parenting. Right. Which so is so allow allow their consequences to do the parenting for and you. And asking them a question yeah. to get them thinking. Yeah. Because I'm not really just interested in the quick fix of their obedience. Mm-hmm. I'm really interested in them growing in character, so yes. that when they become men, they think twice before someone pressures them into doing something that they know is wrong. That's good. Let's get to another one before the close today. Sure. And then next time we'll come back and pick it up. But uh, bedtime battles. Yes. I share, actually, I think that I share more scripts in this chapter than like maybe all the the chapters put together because it has been consistently a problem. And just the fact that there have been multiple scripts tells you that Sometimes you just need to keep tra- changing them up as you got multiple kids, they go through multiple seasons. But um, it can be a silent script. It can be when they come out, you don't talk. Take them by the hand. I mean, talking about little ones, mm-hmm. yeah. and you walk them back to bed. And you do yeah. it over and over and <laughs> yeah, over. Right. Um, and another script, I had a child that was, man, he already struggles with discontentment and always asking for more. So I I have no doubt that half the listener half of, half of your listeners right now are saying yes. My child mm-hmm. who's discontent is most discontent at bedtime. The right. three books and the back tickle and the blessing and the song yeah and making up a story it just wasn't enough. They're asking for more and they're coming out and they're coming out. So I learned I would I would walk up to his bed at tuck in and I would say all right before I get down there and I cuddle with you. I want you to tell me three things that I was just like, I, I did amazing for you today. <laughs> and, and he looked at me the first time like, that's a strange request. I was like, come on, tell me, because I know I did lots of really awesome mom things today. <laughs> and he said, well, you made me bake. And I was like, yes, I nailed it. I don't I know if he meant that bacon. as a positive. <laughs> no, no, bacon is a love <laughs> language. Okay, in our, bacon, yeah, okay. yeah. He I thought you me... said made me bake. <laughs> no, 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 he made me bacon. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's stuff. a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Way to go, mom. And so I was like, okay, what else did I do? Well, you took us to the park and you picked up my friend. I was like, okay, you got three already and we could go on. So now I want you to tell me three things that I can do for you at Tuck In that they're just going to, it's just going to fill your heart. And he said, well, I'd love a back tickle and a blessing and a story. Okay. So I get down there and I do that. And then I said to him, and this became really the last part of the script, 
Your heart is so full of all the yeses you got today. You are not going to call out and you are not going to come out. And I walked out and I kid you not, he didn't call out or come out. <laughs> and it was like, you, you, you know, I'm standing outside breath. the door like, yeah, really, really, is this going to work? And it was the thing. That, and then I started using that. I know that the, this, we're not necessarily talking about discontentment right now, but I think that that can be one of the things they want more and more right. and more. And so during the day I started using it. Hey, Caleb, tell me three things that you've gotten a yes at today. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's really wonderful. You don't need to push for more right now. But my favorite bedtime battle script didn't come from me because I had tried all the things and then there's still other problems. My husband said um, at bedtime one night, guys, I've been watching you at bedtime. Your mom loves bedtime more than any other part of the day. She thought this was going to be just the most wonderful part of our family life. And you guys push her and push her and don't honor her. So She's not tucking anyone into bed tonight. And the kids were like, what? Life without a tuck-in? He said, you may meet with her on the couch. Back to the couch, right? The white couch. The white couch. She'll be on the white couch. couch. (laughs) Dun, 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 dun. dun. (laughs) And they got to come to me. And the thing is, I still gave them everything I usually give them. I hugged them. I blessed them. I sang their blessing. I tickled their back sitting up. And I sent them off. And I said, if you can stay in your room tonight, I'll tuck you in tomorrow night. And it worked. And it worked. And yeah. now when I see them coming out, I say, listen, you need to head back. And if you can't stay in bed tomorrow night, I don't tuck you in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I think one of the difficulties is when it doesn't work. I, I, you know, we're laughing at some of this. But when you have what I, I mean, you were really confident in that mm-hmm. moment at the, at the tuck-in time saying, yeah. okay, here's what I want from you. I want you to stay in bed. And you turned around and you're rightfully as a parent going, Lord, may this please, work. Yeah. Please you let this work. Shut the door and they didn't come out. But speak to the mom who's doing that, but they're coming out. Right. Well, you What's know, the next th- thing There you are do? some seasons, I think, where we need to embrace that we're not going to have the ideal scenario that we really want and hope for as a parent. And we may actually be missing out on something. I remember when, you know, my boys were really struggling with this. They're very good now about going to bed because we've been exceedingly consistent. That's like the Wendy key. Like Wendy was talking mm-hmm. about. Very, very key to be consistent. We have a routine that is as rigid as a prison system. <laughs> you know, it really with is. With lots of love. Yeah, with lots of love, yeah. We and better your, food. And better food, for sure. Bacon, yeah. bacon and, if they and really nicer are. Beds, bacon. And nicer beds, so they should be very content with all of those yeses, yes. right, that we've given them, Wendy. But so we are really, really consistent, and that helps. We brush our teeth. We have our bath. We um, have a snack a little bit earlier if they really need it. We do the story. We do a song. We do a prayer. And then we're, we kiss and hug and we walk out, you know, and it's a routine and they know. And we're just very calm and loving and firm in our commands. But there was a season when they kept pushing the envelope. And I began to realize that they'd start talking again because they weren't supposed to be talking. After we had the lights out, we said our prayer. It was silent. I'd stay for a moment and then I'd hug and kiss and walk out. But they'd keep saying, but mom, I really wanted. And I was trying to just nip that in the bud. There's no more talking now. The lights are out. Right. And then I began to realize that the things they were trying to share with me were very meaningful. Right. They were finally quiet. They were busy, busy, active boys all day long and doing all kinds of things. And they didn't tell me a whole lot of things that were really going on in the inner workings of their heart. But when I wanted them to be quiet was when their hearts suddenly came alive. And they wanted to tell me, Mommy, you know, I had a hard time with my friend at school today. Right. You know, I really, um, by the way, Mom, I had this really successful moment in art class today. And you know what my teacher told me? Like, I was missing out. I realized I was shutting down their opportunity Mm -hmm. to express what was going on in the deep parts of their heart and mind that they wouldn't normally tell me about during the day. And so I had to discipline myself to stretch it out another half hour. That precious half hour, I really was dying to go take my own bath, you know, or finally shove down a late dinner if it came to that, you know, whatever it was for myself. I had to say, you know what? It's okay. This season is going to pass. They need to tell me what's on their hearts and minds right now. They're not trying to be naughty. There's just so many things they want to express. Well, this is so good, you guys. Um, Amber, Leah, and Wendy Speak, authors of the book Parenting Scripts, Man, thank you for the start of this discussion. I want to keep going and cover a few more of those scripts Great. for moms and dads who are listening. And uh, this is an outstanding resource. You know, we, when we look at a book, we can kind of get bored with book. We can get bookitis. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you need resources that will point you in really practical directions. This is one of those very practical approaches to getting some of the basics of parenting right. And like I said, man, I wish you would have written this 14, 15 years ago. 
for Gene and me. And I'm sure, John, you feel the same with Dina. I do. Hey, I'm John Fuller, and thanks for watching. Get more info about Focus over here and more from our guests over there. And be sure to subscribe to our channel as well.